This is Max Williams with United Real Estate, and today I'm in the city of Richmond. More specifically, I'm in the fan, and today we're going to take a look at a five-bedroom, three-full-bath home. This home is located here in an interesting block. We are in a historic block, and we've got a hodgepodge of different architectural styles. You can see in the middle of the frame there, there's a modern, contemporary uh, I actually was in a open house, I believe, a number of years ago there in that home. Uh, we are in a seven-figure block, uh, that home, and uh, many others here in this immediate neighborhood, definitely in the seven-figure range. Cody Johnson is a country singer. He currently has a hit that is named Dirt Cheap, and in his very eloquent song, he talks about his farm. He has a farm, and... Uh, evidently, there have been out-of-towners coming in and buying land, and he has an emotional attachment to the land. And in the music, he talks about how his little girl, who is now an adult, uh, swung on a swing, and uh, she had a pink bow in her brown hair. Uh, another part of the land, he has a 13 year old or a dog that served him for 13 years as a hunting dog and the dog is buried on the property he also eloquently explains how he went down on one knee and got married to his ex third wife and uh, so all of that kind of builds to the theme that he's not going to sell dirt sheep and uh, i love the song because it's very well written and it has a really nice storyline however it makes me cringe from a real estate standpoint because whenever someone attaches an emotional value to a property, it is a recipe for disaster. And, and let me explain what I mean. Whoever ultimately buys or wants to buy his property does not have an emotional attachment. It is basically just a function of what that home is worth as a byproduct of what other homes nearby have sold for. And when I say homes, I'm talking about farms or any type of property for that matter. That property that he has, of course, has that attachment to him, and he's attaching money to that. Uh, now, people will also do this when it comes to viewing properties. I have people that come on my page all the time and say, that home is overpriced. And without any basis of knowledge, without looking at the comps, without knowing that area, they just automatically say that because it's not a price they would be willing to pay. So there's a very big difference in what is overpriced and what you are willing to pay for a home. This home is priced very attractively a by a byproduct of what has sold in this area. This home is actually priced below $320,000, excuse me, $320 a square foot. That's what the average price per square foot is for this area. And that's for average condition. This home is arguably above average condition because it is newly renovated. You can see here we have a corner lot. It of course is brick home. The addition was put on at some point and the addition really makes a big impact here. When we go in, I'll make sure I point out what the addition space is. It definitely makes a huge impact on how this house uh, flows and the uh, functionality of the home. Uh, this is a very popular area. We are between Western Henrico and the city of Richmond uh, proper, downtown Richmond. A lot of people love this area. There are a lot of nice restaurants, uh, cultural attractions. We've got a load of museums here uh, in this area as well. We can see directly ahead that dumpster is in front of what appears to be new construction. So from time to time, we'll have infill, new construction. A, a house will uh, either be torn down or will burn down, become dilapidated, or it just was a long-term vacant lot and the developer will come in and build new construction. So it's interesting to see how that occurs here in Richmond. Another interesting property right there in the middle of the frame, we have a home that is a brick ranch, but it's sideways. And uh, so I'm not sure what the story is there, but uh, we've got nice quirky properties like that here throughout this area. Okay, let's go on in and take a look. Special thanks to Kristen Hopkins, listing agent, kind enough to allow us to come in and take a look at her beautiful listing. We come in, we have our family room area. This is gonna be actually a more formal uh, space. This home, of course, uh, was opened up here to make it a little bit more conducive to a modern lifestyle. We've got a coat closet here at the front door. We've got gorgeous wood floors here. I'm gonna give you a little sample here on the stair tread. 
uh, but that beautiful wood here is throughout this entire home, both downstairs and up. All right, we do have a sun porch here. This is a really neat feature, very common in this area to have this. And it is screened. We have a door there leading to the back. We also have a ceiling fan in place. Great place to catch a nice little breeze here on an uh, evening or a morning. Uh, plenty of space if you want to put a table out. A uh, great place to enjoy uh, Sunday brunch, perhaps. All right, this home also features a wood burning fireplace. Now, in the city, we've got to be careful because some of the fireplaces will be very shallow and they will be coal burning fireplaces. Of course, we don't burn coal anymore, but that would be a very functional wood burning fireplace there in the living room. We have beautiful crown molding in this space as well. We are nice and open here to our dining area and our kitchen, which is there to the left. To the right is going to be our bedroom wing. But before we go there, I'm gonna take you down into our unfinished basement. Now this space is great because if you have storage needs, this is not a nasty basement. I've been in some very nasty basements that are cold, damp, moldy, mildewy, and uh, this one is nice and clean. I'm sure you can tell here from the video uh, that it is definitely good storage space uh, that is very comfortable. And uh, so in the older homes, we often will have unfinished basements. And uh, I like this one particularly because we've got a nice ceiling height here. It's not a uh, ceiling height that's super, super low. So uh, it definitely has a nice feel to it. Okay, we've got our, uh, that is going to be an oil burning unit there. Going to provide uh, heat and air here for this home. Okay, I'm now going to take you straight ahead. This is where our addition is right here. And often we can tell because we've got a nice wide threshold there. And here in the wall, we can tell as well. Now you can close these doors off and you can see there. So if you did not want to perhaps heat and cool this space, you could uh, maybe turn off or turn the uh, registers off and then uh, save a little bit on your utilities. This is a dedicated laundry room and this is huge. Imagine what you could do in here for storage. You got plenty of space there here in this beautiful family room. Look at the detail there in that tray ceiling. We've got plenty of recessed lights. Uh, this is going to be like an LVP type material here in this space. We've got the door there going off to the side. And this room just really makes this home much more functional uh, because it is additional square footage that somebody would actually use. And um, I think it was a real smart move uh, at some point for the previous owner to go ahead and put this room in place. Okay, directly ahead is going to be another closet. And for some reason, it doesn't want to open for me, but that's okay, because we're going to make a left here. And this is going to be our hall bath. Uh, this is really neat space. We've got a linen closet here. We've got some decorative tile on the floor and tile also on the walls. Look at this here. This is a tub, but it is diagonal. And not only is it a tub, but there's also a shower head here. So this is a tub shower. This is ceramic tile here and um, just a really unique look. I don't think I've seen anything like that before. We've got some additional storage here, some additional linen storage and just a really cute little bathroom. All right. If we go out and go straight across, this is going to be bedroom number one. Plenty of light. You can see that whole wall there is nothing but window. So this would be a great home office here. Someone could keep an eye out on the street there, have plenty of natural light. Here to the right is going to be bedroom number two. Uh, this is probably about the same size. You could definitely get a queen in here with no problem. Beautiful wood floors. These are going to be replacement windows. You can see they're in great condition our closet in place and then our primary is going to be first floor not common on these older homes to have a first 
floor primary. So this is kind of unique. A lot of people really like that idea of not having to go upstairs for their primary bedroom. This one does also have the unusual feature of a walk-in closet. We typically don't see a lot of walk-in closets in our older homes, but we have that in place. And transitioning now into our primary bath, and it is very nice. They did a great job here. This home, of course, is beautifully staged. Definitely helps bring it to life. Got the double vanity in place, ceramic tile on the floor, and then we have a gorgeous gray tile bath. And I think they did a really nice job of, of laying this out. If you have been watching for any time, you know that the older homes, typically, you're not going to have a huge primary bath, but they did a really nice job here with uh, a layout. And we've got more because I'm going to take you upstairs and we've got two additional large bedrooms up there. So we've got five bedrooms, three full bath here in this beautiful older home. A lot of people really like the character of these homes. Uh, they're definitely not cookie cutter and um, there's nothing like being in a historic neighborhood with a lot of character. Okay, this is going to be bedroom number four. Plenty of space here. This is going to be the largest, I believe, of the bedrooms. So if you wanted to have this as a primary, you could, of course, do that. This would work, of course, for multi-generational families. If someone wanted to be downstairs because of mobility issues, they could do that. We have our nice deep closet here. And then the second floor bathroom is nicely appointed. Once again, we've got the ceramic tile. They gave us that nice decorative nook there. Everything is nice and clean, bright and fresh. All right, directly across, this is an interesting space. Um, the first thing I notice is we have a doorbell. Not too sure why. They made this into a closet. We also have something here. I'm not sure if there was some type of lift, but that is in place, of course, no longer in use. And then we have a second heating and air unit. This is going to be a heat pump, which of course provides heat and cooling. Uh, and that's probably just for the second floor. So we've got a couple of zones here, which is really nice in a home that's in the 2,700 square foot range. Another closet, that's gonna be three closets here. So we've got no shortage of storage space in this beautiful home. There also was a storage building in the back that uh, has a really good size to it as well. So you don't have any problems here with storage. This bedroom is gonna have two closets. We've got this one right here, and then we've got a sister closet uh, that's over here. Good natural light also flows into this bedroom. And uh, this is a really neat older home in a very well-established and popular neighborhood. Remember, price is determined by popularity. Agents do not determine prices on real estate. Appraisers do not determine value. The, the public, the buying public, determines value. And wherever a neighborhood is more popular, it's gonna sell at a higher price. It's just very, very simple. People have this notion that agents or investors, or developers drive the prices. The public drives prices in this and every other market in the country. Max Williams, 804-402-7788. You can reach it on Facebook under Richmond Area Foreclosures on YouTube under my name, Max Williams Realtor. Please be sure to comment, like, and subscribe. Thanks so much for taking the tour. Y'all be safe. Have a great day.